Oh, Brother William called me. Said, hey, we want you to do the whole preach homecoming service. And gosh, I had so many flashbacks. Jason. Oh, if it don't work right, just you know, look at it. This new technology left me a few years ago. Sixty years sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. Oh my. And it gets sweeter every day. And you know what? <laughs> It's getting closer to that final day. Amen. What a day that will be when my Jesus I'll get to see face to face. Some of the flashbacks I had, first of all, I recall it was 10 or 11 years ago, I don't know exactly the day, and I walked into that little red brick building next door. <coughs> About 30 folks, I think it was, in church. And I've seen the power of Almighty God. I watched Him as we begin to swell in that little building. And then one Sunday, I don't know who He was, a man opened that back door and stuck his head in. I don't know who he was looking for or if he was looking for a seat. But neither was there. Every seat was filled. There may have been a place or two. He didn't see them. And I made a remark that day or the next Sunday we're going to start meeting in the gym for church. A man opened the door and walked away. Was he hunting someone to tell him about Jesus? That's our business. That's our business. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. I've seen him work in hearts, in lives, I've seen lives changed. I and many others sitting here today been backed up against the wall. <laughs> God put me in the corner a lot of times. Because I, He probably put a dunce cap on my head. Uh, but I want to speak to you today on the mighty power of a mighty... <coughs> God. I will tell you this, that Satan is mighty, but God is almighty. He has the power in His hand. I want you to turn with me in your Bible as we start our journey today to 1 Peter chapter 1. Oh, it's a joy for me today, and I have to be careful to not strut just a little bit. <laughs> the temptation is there, and I have to say, get thee behind me, Satan. <clears throat> Sometimes when I'm at the table, I say, get thee behind me, Satan, and push. And I need to tell him to hold me back. First Peter, beginning at chapter 1, verse 1. Peter an apostle of Jesus Christ to the strangers, to those believers scattered throughout Pontus and Galatia, Cappadocia and Asia and Bithynia, elect the chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and unto the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ grace be unto you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ 
which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a living or lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away <laughs> reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Heavenly Father, bless the reading of your holy word. May your holy presence and power come and sweep mightily through this place today. I ask in your precious darling son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Kept. Are, are you saved? Do, do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord? Has there been that time in your life where you turned to Him in repentance of your sin? God, I'm a sinner. I come to you. I repent of my sin. I beg and ask your forgiveness to come into my heart. And that has happened to you. Do you understand you're kept by the power of God. Did he realize anything about the power of God? If you look over in the book of Genesis, the first chapter, now we're going to go to Genesis, we're going to end up in Revelation. And so we'll probably come through, oh, no, you see, keep your seat, we won't be that long. Uh, in the book of Genesis, the first chapter, Eight times God, it says, and God said. <laughs> I have before made a remark that was wrong. And I apologize for that and I share with you. And I've said that God reached out and took a handful of nothing and made something out of it. He didn't do it. He just said. He spoke everything into creation. Do you understand the power of God? Just His Word has power. Let me tell you something. There's power in this old book. The power of God. We somewhere, somehow, have lost it. We've forsaken it. We've taken it for granted. Does it really work? God's Word says we are kept. Uh, the, the actual reading of the Greek is we are guarded. <laughs> Do you understand what the meaning of a guard is? God is guarding your life. And whom shall I fear? <laughs> He's out there guarding for me. I'm in the hand of my Lord Jesus. And He's in the hand of the Heavenly Father. <laughs> oh, Satan, come on, you can't get to me. Whip you with a broke water pistol. The great mighty power of God. And then, after God had said, and He said eight times, with each matter of creation, he spoke it into me. You just read the book and see. In the first chapter, read it. And then you know what he said? Boy, have we made a mess of it. He said, and it's very good. <laughs> Do we understand what very good is? My goodness. And it's very good. Haven't we made a mess of God's very good creation? I tell you what, I don't think it's going to be much longer. I, I had an old preacher saying, 
He said, I, I hope I die before the rapture. I asked him, I said, why? He said, because I want to go first. The scripture says the dead in Christ shall rise first. He said, I want to go first. He always wanted to get ahead of everybody. <laughs> I don't care who goes first. At any moment. At any moment. Oh, it's in the book. That he's coming again a twinkling of an eye at an unexpected time. I believe that maybe coronavirus has got to, has scared everybody away from God. I want to say something probably. Well, I'm going to say it anyway, whether you like it or not. A lot of folks are using the fact that there is a coronavirus as an excuse for being in God's house when it could be. I'm not saying it's not real, but I've been exposed to it. I've been shook hands with a person that had it. I visited a person in the corona unit because the nurse that was over the unit was the wife of Pastor Friend, whom I used to pastor. And when they say, I mashed the button, they said, could, could I help you? And I told them, who, I want to come see you. And they said, who is it? And I told them, it's Morris Gorsi, come on in. Nine o'clock I visited in that room. That preacher, I said, I'm gonna go he said, I'm going to go and preach and I'll come back. I said, you stay here with your wife. I'm going to preach for you. Twelve o'clock that day we got out and walked out of church. The phone rung. She had gone home to be with the Lord. I had a little something another couple, three weeks ago and on Monday morning I was in my doctor's office and he gave me an antibiotic and I'm still going. Oh, listen to me, the power of God. It's amazing. I want you to look with me to, uh, oh, let me see. Philippians 3.10. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I love this verse of Scripture. That I may know Him do you know him? And the power of his resurrection. Paul said, that's all I want to know. I just want to know him and the power of the resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. Uh-oh. Persecution. Ridicule. Being made fun of. <coughs> I don't care if they call me a holy roller. I don't care. I just know who I'm living. I know who I'm rolling for. Uh, the resurrection. Oh, let me turn, turn with me to yet another reading of God's Word. In the book of Matthew, the 27th chapter. Turn there. I want you to see. I don't want you to just listen to what I'm saying. I want you to see it. And if your Bible's like mine and it's the King James, you may have some of the other. It may sound a little different. But it's all talking about the same thing, or it better be. And behold the veil in verse 51 of the 27th chapter of Matthew. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose. Did you get that? 
at the resurrection of Jesus. Who was it? The saints arose. Power in the resurrection. God has power to raise the dead. He raised His Son. And as He did, God was just giving us a, a foresight of what could happen to us. It wasn't going to just be Jesus that was raised from the dead, but the saints. It didn't say Christians. It didn't say believers. I've had folks tell me, well, I'm saved, but I'm not a saint. I know what they're saying. I'm a backslidden, out of touch with God individual, and I need to get right. That's really what they're saying. A saint of God walking with the Lord every day. Every day. The days you don't feel like walking with Him. The days when you're laying flat in your back looking at the ceiling ain't able to walk, Brother Blanks. Walking with Him. Romans 1st chapter verse 16 For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. The power in the Word. God is our almighty power. Acts 1 8, he said, and you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit is up, come upon you. You receive the Holy Spirit. When do you receive the Holy Spirit? The day Jesus came into your heart. You, you see, it was the Holy Spirit that kind of was tugging at you. You know that, that tugging feeling that you have? That, that, that gnawing at your feeling? Something that is working on your conscience? The Holy Spirit said you need to come to Jesus. You need to come back to Him. You need a homecoming. Being brought back to a right relationship with Him. Matthew 28 and verse 18 Jesus said all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. <laughs> How much power? He said all. How much is all? Well, I don't understand how much all is. I know it's sufficient. It is all sufficient. Jesus said it's given to him. And in John the 20th chapter, he said, and the power I have, I give to you. And in the latter part of that book of John, he said if all things were recorded that he did, this book couldn't hold it all. Huh. The power, the mighty power of God. Oh, look with me, if you would, on the back, back here in the back of this book. The book of Revelation. Verse 9, chapter 19. I'll get there in a little bit. Oh, goodness. You want to read some things that will light your fire or put the fire out, maybe. Twenty-eight 
talks about worship in heaven. Goodness alive. How we ought to enjoy. Do you enjoy worship here on earth? Hmm? Yeah. I hear them run every once in a while. <laughs> We're going to come alive in heaven. Man. Sitting around, well, I guess some of the things he said might be. So, but it never bothered me. Well, let me tell you something. When you get there in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we see the one who has on his vesture the name King of Kings and Lord of Lords, when all power has been given, and oh, let me let me start here. In, in chapter 19, verse starting at verse 11, and I saw heaven opened. And behold, a white horse, and he that sat on was called Faithful and True. Who else is that? Who else could that be? He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father by, but by me. So the door to heaven is Jesus Christ. Uh, verse 12, his eyes were the flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. Lord of lords, King of kings. Enemies of heaven followed, uh, followed him from upon white horses, clothed with white linen, and uh, armies which were in heaven. And out of his mouth flew the sharp sword that he ruled the nations with a rod of iron and treadeth the wine press of the fierceness of the wrath of who? Almighty God. The mighty power of God. Then down in verse 6 of the 20th chapter. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection and on such the second death hath no part. Power. But they shall be priests of God and Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. All the way at the end of that thousand years, we're going to forever be with him. That's when the books will be open. That's when death and hell will be cast into the lake of, lake of fire. That's when those whose names are found written in the book of life will have their joyous place forever and ever and ever in the presence of the Lord Jesus. Oh my, the mighty power of a mighty God. That's who we serve. I want to ask you a question. Do you really know him? Do you really, really know him? Do, do, you, do you really, really, really love him? Do you really, really, really Praise Him. If you don't know Him, you can't praise Him. You've got to know Him to praise Him. Because you don't know who you're trying to praise. Oh, you know, you've heard about it, but have you experienced it? I want every head bowed, and every eye closed, if you would, please. We serve a mighty God. And I want to just ask you. Oh my. So preacher, I, I, I know I'm saved. I have no doubt about it. I want you, if you would, to, just as a testimony, acknowledging that I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I'm saved. Would you raise your hand? Just raise your hand. Oh, praise the Lord. Yes, all over the building. Yes, yes. I know. Thank you. You may put your hand down. I want to ask you another question now. You may not have understood my question, but I want to make this clear and plain. 
Preacher, I've never accepted Jesus. I need him in my life. I need that power of his presence. Would you raise your hand? No one's looking. It's not to embarrass you. It's to pray for you. Yes. Yes. Are there other hands? Now I want to have one other question. You know that you're saved, you're a Christian. You attend church here at Canaan. You call it your church home. But have you come and united with the church? A transfer of membership from another Baptist church? Or come on, perhaps you have been saved but never followed the Lord in baptism. You need to come and do that today. Make it a great homecoming experience when you're coming back home to the Lord Jesus. Father, bless. Move to the hearts of those whom you have touched today. In Jesus' name. Would you stand together? And we